Hi friends, happy Wind Down Wednesday. I'm so glad you're here with us this evening. Find some place cozy to sit and we will get started. Today in class, we learned about a super awesome habit of mind. It's called questioning and problem posing. So when I was looking through all of my books, I came across just the right book to help us with practicing questioning and problem posing. Not only do we ask questions using our voice, but we also write questions. Do you remember what punctuation mark you need to put at the end of a question, which is an asking sentence? Kiss your brain if you said a question mark. This evening, we're going to be reading, I wonder why I blink, and other questions about my body. Where does my food go? What makes me sneeze? Why do I get sick sometimes? What are germs? If you're wondering about those questions, give a connection wiggle. We asked some great questions today in class. Share with someone at home a question you were wondering about. What was extra special is that we learned sometimes our friends in class who are also students have the answers to your questions. They become the teacher. I think it's really special when that happens. I wonder why I blink and other questions about my body by Bridget Avison. This is the table of contents. In nonfiction books, we see a table of contents. It tells us all the topics that we are going to read about. I'm wondering what we will learn. Even though there is, um, we'll see drawings in this nonfiction, not fake book, um, the facts are there are facts, which are true statements that can be proven. And we're also going to see captions and labels on the drawings of um, realistic images. Um, captions are little, or sentences that are next to drawings or pictures that give us information about that image. Labels point to certain things. The label matches whatever it is pointing to. Is my body the same as everyone else's? You are the only person exactly like you in the whole world that makes you very special. But although you are different from everyone else, your body is made of the same things as theirs. And it has exactly the same parts doing all the different jobs that keep you alive. Brain, nose, mouth, nerves, blood vessels, lungs, muscles, bones, liver, heart, stomach. Here are some captions. Every person's body has all the important parts shown below. These are some of the parts of the body that can be different. Hair can be dark, fair, or red, curly, wavy, or straight. Eyes can be different shades of blue, brown, gray, or green. Noses are different shapes. Some people have freckles. Muscles can be big or small. Skin comes in lots of different colors. Some people are tall, some are small. Some people um, are you can see have um, some different features like her chin 
right? And this round. Some people have more pointy chins. Can you see the wavy lines in the skin on your fingertips? Everyone look at your fingertips. They are your fingerprints. No one else in the whole world has the same fingerprints as you. Today we watched a zebra video and we learned that zebras have a connection to us. There are no two zebras that have the exact same stripe pattern. What is inside my head? Have you ever had that question before? The most exciting and important part of your body is hidden inside your head, beneath your hair, your skin, and your hard skull bone. It is your brain. Your brain is the part of you that thinks and remembers. It also makes sure the rest of your body is doing what it should. Your brain has two sides. The right side of your brain takes care of the left side of your body, while the left side takes care of the right side of your body. People's brains come in different sizes, but bigger brains don't make people smarter any more than having big feet makes them better runners. So it doesn't matter the size of your brain. It is important though that you train your brain. And that's why we learn about the habits of mind. Ooh, what makes me feel things? Every minute of the day, your brain is being sent messages about all the different things that are happening inside and outside your body. Some are about things you feel. All of the messages travel to your brain along paths called nerves. Nerves tell your body what's happening to it, like whether water feels too hot or too cold. Mess messages travel very fast along your nerves. The quickest go as fast as 250 miles an hour. Your nerves start in your brain, then travel in a thick bundle down your back, inside your backbone. From there, they branch out to every part of your body. Hurt or pain are feelings that tell you if something is wrong. They are, they are your body's warning system. It hurts when you stub your toe because your body is telling you to stop. Something is in the way. Give a connection wiggle if you're learning so much. Me too. I love remaining open to continuous learning. What is my skin for? Skin is the stretchy bag you live in. It covers your whole body, holding your inside in and protecting them from the outside world. How thick is my skin? In most places, your skin isn't much thicker than cardboard. But although it is so thin, lots of things happen inside it. Hair grows in skin and sweat is made there. Skin also has blood vessels and nerves to send messages to your brain. Blood vessels, hair muscle, nerve ending, sweat making gland. Sweat comes out of holes called pores. Your skin gets its color from something called even teachers want to make sure that they are accurate when they pronounce something. So let's double check. Let me strive for accuracy and I will be right back. Found it. Melanin. Your skin gets its color from something called melanin. People with dark skin have more melanin than people with light skin. Whether your skin is light or dark, too much sun can burn you. Wear a hat and put on a layer of sun protection cream. Sweat is salty water that your body makes when it's hot to help you keep cool. Have you ever wondered what goosebumps are? Touch your nose if you have. What are goosebumps? When a cat is cold, its fur fluffs up. This traps a blanket of air next to its skin to keep it warm. Your hair also stands up when you are cold and shivery and goosebumps are made by tiny hair muscles tightening. This, do this doesn't keep you very warm though because you aren't hairy enough.
How do I move? Muscles make you move by pulling your bones around. When you smile or cry, speak or cry, speak or eat, walk or skip, muscles are doing the work. A muscle can only make itself shorter. It needs another muscle pulling the other way to stretch it out again. Your biggest muscles are the ones you sit on. Why do strong people have big muscles? Muscles get bigger and stronger if they are used a lot. Touch your chin if you use your muscles a lot. That's why athletes practice hard and do lots of exercises. Many tennis players have bigger muscles in the arms they use to hold their racket. To make a bone move, a muscle gets shorter. This pulls the bone one way. To pull the bone back again, another muscle gets shorter. Muscles are attached to your bones by strong white strings called tendons. This muscle tightens to bend your arm. Tendon. When this muscle tightens, your arms straighten. What is a cramp? A cramp is when a muscle suddenly feels tight and painful. It stops moving properly and it feels as if it's stuck. No one is quite sure why a cramp happens, but it goes away if you rest the, rest the sore spot. Rubbing it can also help. Have you ever had a stitch after running? It's a pain in your side, just under your ribs. Everyone point under your ribs. It means you have a cramp in the breathing muscle below your lungs. Have you under, ever wondered why do I breathe? You pull air into your body when you breathe. And air is something your body cannot do without, even for just a few minutes. This is because air has a gas called oxygen in it, and your body needs oxygen to live and grow. When you breathe in, air goes down your windpipe to your lungs. These are like big sponges that hold air instead of water. If you fold your arms across your chest and breathe in, you'll feel your lungs getting bigger as they fill up with air. Will you try that at home? Why do I get hiccups? Raise your hand if you've ever wondered that. Me too. There's a big muscle below your lungs, which helps you to breathe. It's called your diaphragm. You hiccup when something makes this muscle pull down really hard, drawing lots of air into your lungs. To keep too much air from rushing in, a flap at the top of your windpipe clamps down. This closes off the airflow so quickly that your whole body jerks. The hick sound is air rushing in. The cup part is the flap clamping down over your windpipe. So now you know why you get hiccups. Why do we sneeze? If dust or germs get into your nose, your body makes you sneeze. Achoo! To get rid of them, your lungs shoot out air, clearing your nose. When you sneeze, air rushes down your nose at over 100 miles an hour. Have you ever wondered, what does your heart do? What does my heart do? This is a heading. We see headings in nonfiction texts. And then below the heading, we read text that is connected to the heading. Your muscle is a very special muscle. Your heart is a very special muscle, which keeps blood moving around your body. If you put your hand on your chest near your heart, you'll feel it beating. Touch your ear if you feel your heart beating. Each time it beats, it pumps blood out around your body. To hear a heart beating, find somewhere quiet and rest your ear against a friend's chest. You should hear two sounds close together. Lub-dump, lub-dump. 
Blood travels around your body in thin tubes called blood vessels. Blood from your body. Blood from your head. Blood to the body. Blood with oxygen is the red hour, um, arrows. Blood without oxygen is the blue arrows. Blood to your lungs. You can see her going that way. Your body is using up oxygen all the time, keeping you alive. So it has to keep getting more from your lungs. One side of your heart pumps blood to your lungs to get oxygen. The other side pumps it around your body. Hey, what is blood for? Your blood is like a fast moving river flowing around your body. It carries useful things like, like oxygen from the air you breathe and the goodness from the food you eat to every part of your body. It also helps you, your body, to fight germs. Some insects have blue or green blood. When you were a baby, you had less than a quart of blood, not quite enough to fill a milk carton. When you grow up, you will have about five quarts of blood, enough to, enough to half fill a bucket. Hey, how big is your heart? How big is my heart? Our hearts grow with us. They get bigger as we do. Whatever size you are now, your heart will be a bit bigger than your fist. Why do I blink? Your eyes make tears all the time, not only when you cry. Blinking spreads the tears across your eyes and stops them from drying out and getting sore. The iris is the colored part of your eye. It works a little like curtains on a window. When it's too dark to see, the iris opens to let in more light. When the light is too bright, the iris tightens up to protect the eye. A blink lasts for about one third of a second. We're going to talk about fractions a little bit this year in first grade. One third means imagining something in three parts, like a cookie breaking it into three equal parts. One of those parts is one third. So a blink lasts for about one third of a second, which is even quicker than that snap. You do it, do it thousands of times a day. Oh, here's some labels. Eyelash, pupil, iris. Eyelashes help to keep things like dust and grit from getting into your eyes. The black hole in the middle of your eye is called the pupil. Jelly-like stuff in your eyeball keeps it in shape like air in a balloon. Why can't I see in the dark? You can't see much when it's dark because eyes need light to see. If you look at your eyes in a mirror, mirror you'll see a black hole in the middle of them. Light bounces off everything around you and in through this hole. Messages are then sent from your eyes to your brain telling you what you are looking at. The lining at the back of the eye is called the retina. The picture that forms here is upside down. Your brain turns it the right way up. A nerve inside here carries messages to your brain. There's a lens at the front of your eye. It makes sure the things you see aren't fuzzy by making light shine in the right place at the back of the eye. Have you ever wondered why your ears such a funny shape? The shape of your ears helps them to catch sound from the air. The sounds then go through your outer ear into the hidden part of your ear inside your head. Animals like rabbits can move their ears to help them catch sound. Hey, why do I feel dizzy when I spin around? Inside each ear, you have three loop-shaped tubes with watery liquid in them. This swishes around when you spin. Special nerves pick up this movement and tell the brain you are spinning. If you stop suddenly, 
The liquid goes all on swishing around for a little longer. Your brain gets the wrong message and you feel dizzy. Did you know that you have a drum in your ear? Your eardrum is a piece of thin skin that moves back and forth very quickly when sounds hit it. Here's the eardrum. When your eardrum moves, it makes three tiny bones wobble. We have the hammer bone, the anvil bone, the stirrup bone. When the bones wobble, they make watery liquid deep inside your ear move too. Special nerves pick up this movement movement and send messages to your brain. This nerve carries messages from the ear to the brain. These tubes help you to balance. The smallest bone in your body is in the ear. It is called the stirrup and it is um, about eight tenths of an inch from one end to the other. Small enough to sit on top of this letter U. So if you look very closely at that little U, at top at the top of it right imagine a little tiny bone on top of that letter u that's how tiny it is if you hold a shell to your ear you'll hear the sound of the blood flowing around inside your head it sounds a little like the sea touch your chin if you've ever done that before what is my nose for your nose is for smelling things and it also helps your tongue with tasting. It can do this because tiny bits of food are carried by air up into your nose when you eat. The bits are much too small to see, but nerves inside your nose find them and send messages about them to your brain. When a cold stuffs up your nose, air can't get to the nose nerves and you can't taste your food properly. Here's a way to see how much you taste things with your nose. You'll need someone to help you and make sure you ask help um, ask for help from a grown-up. Get two different flavors of fruit yogurt. Shut your eyes tight and hold your nose. See if you can tell which yogurt you are teeth tasting. Hey, what is my tongue for? Your tongue is for tasting things, but it also helps you speak and sing. It is covered with tiny little bumps called taste buds, which send messages along nerves to your brain about the food you eat. To see how your tongue helps you to speak, put your finger on it and try to say, hello. Why do teeth fall out? There's some friends who have wiggly teeth in class. They wonder if they will lose them soon. We will put another tally mark on our tooth chart. As you grow up, most parts of your body get bigger, but your teeth can't grow bigger. And so you have to replace them. When you are small, you have 20 small teeth called milk teeth. These start to fall out when you are five or six years old to let new, bigger teeth grow in their place. When you are grown up, you will have between 28 and 32 teeth. Oh. Many of you will be sleeping soon if you're not asleep already. Why do I have to sleep? Your muscles don't have to do much work when you're asleep. And your brain doesn't have to worry about what's happening in the world around you. Resting these parts of your body gives it a chance to do other jobs. Sleep gives your body time to grow and if you are ill, to mend itself. Babies sleep most of the time because they are growing so quickly. What is sleepwalking? Some people get out of bed and walk around while they are still sleeping. They don't know they are doing it. When they wake up, they usually can't remember it either. Everyone moves when they sleep. You turn over sometimes or even kick your legs. You breathe more slowly when you are asleep and your heart beats less, less quickly. Many animals dream when they're asleep. Dogs sometimes look as though they're hunting. What's a dream? A dream is a story your brain makes up while you sleep. You seem to, sl to see and hear things and it feels as if they are really happening to you. Sometimes you have happy dreams. Dreams can also be frightening or sad, but they are only happening inside your head. A scary dream is called a nightmare. 
If you get very frightened, you may cry or shout while you are still asleep. The nightmare stops when you wake up. Why do I get sick sometimes? When a part of your body stops working properly, you get sick. You don't feel right. Maybe your stomach hurts or you may have a lot of itchy spots on your skin. Sickness often happens because things called germs get inside your body. Sometimes your body has to fight and kill germs. The doctor may give you medicine to help it to do this. Some germs like dirt. Washing your body and cleaning your teeth help keep these germs away. What are germs? We learned about that in science earlier this school year. Even though a cold can make you feel very ill, most of your body is still working properly. Germs are tiny living things far too small to see. There are billions of them on, around, and in you all the time. Most germs won't hurt you, but some of them can cause sickness if they get inside you through a cut or if you eat something bad. When this happens, your blood gets to work on the germs and kills them. Why do I need shots? The doctor or nurse gives you a shot if a medicine needs to be put straight into your blood. Nobody likes it, but a little scratch or prick is better than being sick for a long time. Babies need a lot of shots to help their bodies get ready to fight off germs. I loved learning all of these answers to questions you might be wondering about. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And while this was a longer Wind Down Wednesday, I hope you have a chance to listen to it. Maybe you'll listen to part of it this evening and part of it another night. I hope you have a great rest of your night and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.